What's up, guys? Jordan here from Show Me Vegas. Hey, it's Monday again. Time for another episode of This Week in Vegas, episode 9, December 6th, 2021. Hey, before we get started this week, I want to put in a plug for the Jeff Does Vegas podcast. If you've never heard of this podcast before, you need to go check it out. Jeff does a great job with this podcast. It's extremely informative, extremely entertaining, and very professionally done. He recently interviewed us, Show Me Vegas, for the latest episode that's out there today. I'll put the links in the description below, but also run through his archive because I think you're really going to enjoy it. Now, previously on this vlog, I had reported on the Oakland Athletics search for a site for a ballpark in Las Vegas for a potential relocation. Well, now one site has actually been disclosed. One site that the Oakland Athletics are actually looking at is the site of the Tropicana. That would be at the southeast corner of Tropicana and Las Vegas Boulevard, one of the busiest intersections in all of Las Vegas, if not the United States. Now, clearly, there's already a resort there being the famed Tropicana, so... If this is actually real, and if they actually have a chance at this land, they'll have to buy the resort and demolish what's currently there. To me, that wouldn't be any big loss. The Tropicana, it's got a cool nostalgia, a little bit of history to it, but it's certainly seen better days. It's not uh, very popular. You almost never hear anybody talk about the Tropicana. It's an interesting site because that property is currently run by Penn National Gaming, and it was recently announced not too long ago that uh, that property was going to be sold to the Bally's Corporation, and that deal still has not closed yet. It was supposed to close in early 2022. Now, whether that deal is still going to take place, it remains to be seen, but the A's are interested in that property. Now, I mentioned that's one of the busiest intersections in town, so putting a ballpark there might be a traffic nightmare, although they are saying that this ballpark is probably only going to be in the neighborhood of 30 to 35,000 seats, so a smaller ballpark. Certainly a smaller stadium than what Allegiant Stadium is, not very far away. So traffic-wise, not going to work very well. Parking-wise, that has been a really big point of contention with Allegiant Stadium because there's not enough parking over there. So parking on the Strip is already at a premium. Now, there is some land around this site. You can see here on the map, just to the south of the Tropicana, there are some empty lots. So Potentially, they could negotiate some more land purchases there and maybe put a parking garage or two there. It remains to be seen. Now, that's not the only piece of land that uh, the A's are looking at. Evidently, they are also looking at a piece of land owned by the Wynn, by Wynn Resorts. Now, I can only imagine that's this piece of land right here, right across the street from Wynn and Encore, and just south of Resorts World. That one doesn't appear to me, now I'm no uh, engineer or architect, but that one doesn't appear to me to be large enough to uh, uh, put a billion dollar baseball stadium on. So that remains to be seen. The other property they're supposedly looking at is owned by Caesars Entertainment. Nobody knows exactly where that is, uh, so I couldn't find anything on that. It's not the Rio. Once again, it's not going to be the Rio. The Rio is being sold, and that, that property is far too valuable to be torn down and turned into a baseball stadium. Now, all of this could just be the A's blowing smoke to further their interest in getting a new stadium in Oakland. That's on the ballot there. There's a ballot measure in the Oakland area as to whether to provide funding for a huge development in Oakland to uh, build a new ballpark and a lot of other things around it. So that remains to be seen whether that'll actually happen, whether the A's will actually leave Oakland and go to Las Vegas. But the A's are creating quite a bit of noise about looking for land in Las Vegas, and now we have an idea of where they want to build. Also in the news this week, Nevada casinos continue to win and at a record pace. I've reported on this vlog in the past about the state gaming win topping a billion dollars month after month, and that did happen again in October. That marks the eighth consecutive month when the state gaming win topped a billion dollars. That ties now for the longest uh, streak in state history. The uh, previous uh, record was held from 2006 to 2007, so eons ago in terms of Las Vegas time. So uh, it's rather impressive the gaming run that the state has been on. Now that has not necessarily transferred into large profits. I mentioned uh, a couple of weeks ago about how Caesars Entertainment showed a large third quarter loss in 2021, and they're not the only ones. Wynn Resorts has lost money in the third quarter. Las Vegas Sands Corporation lost money in the third quarter. So despite strong gaming numbers, these companies aren't necessarily making a lot of money. Now, MGM Resorts is making a lot of money. However, they're a lot more geographically diversified than uh, some of these other companies. So yes, the house is winning at a record pace, but don't let that completely discourage you. Winners continue to be made in Las Vegas. Again this week, there were some huge jackpots. 
An anonymous person at the Golden Nugget won this $1,195,000 jackpot on a Wheel of Fortune machine. Also downtown at the Four Queens, this woman from Oklahoma won $388,000. Also on a Wheel of Fortune machine, are you seeing any kind of trend here? I think we all need to start playing Wheel of Fortune a little bit more. I know I need to. On the topic of masks and COVID in the Vegas area, a representative with the Nevada governor's office mentioned this week that the mask mandate will continue into 2022. Officials cited the new variant and concerns about the winter surge uh, for these guidelines. So they still have not met the metrics. I've mentioned that in this vlog previously that I think if they're going to get rid of the mask mandate, they're going to have to move the goalposts at some point. I don't expect them to do that anytime soon, especially now with a new variant. Uh, possibly moving in, and winter and flu season and all the things that come with that. I don't think that mask mandate's going away anytime soon. Now, if you've been to Vegas in the last couple of months, you know that this time around they're not nearly as vigilant about enforcing that mask mandate. It is enforced, but a lot more loosely. You're not having people telling you to pull it right back up after you took a sip. Uh, they're more concerned about large gatherings like shows and that sort of thing. So, so enforcement is not nearly as strict, but the mask mandate remains, and it will for a while. Finally, the Palms is one step closer to reopening now as the Nevada Gaming Control Board just recently recommended the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians for a gaming license. Now, they don't have their gaming license just yet, but they're going to be recommended for one by the Gaming Control Board. It still has to be voted uh, by the Nevada Gaming Commission. That will take place on December 16th. And if they're approved at that time, they'll officially hold a gaming license and can move forward with reopening the Palms. They have stated that not a lot of work needs to be done to the property because Red Rock Resorts had recently spent nearly $700 million to renovate the property, and they say it's in terrific condition. They've set aside about $100 million for changes and upgrades before they do open it. But at this point, their main concern is building back up their workforce. They're going to try to rehire as many of the Old Palms employees as they can and hope to open that property in the first half of 2022. Hey, that's it for this week, episode 9 of This Week in Vegas. Thanks, as always, for watching. If you would, do please hit that subscribe button. Also, hit that thumbs up. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss this vlog or any others. Once again, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.